Okay, this is the first video for the solution manual for the trigonometry final exam review packet. Uh, we're starting with the main packet. What I'm going to do is make a video for each page of the packet. So this video will cover the three problems on the first page. All three problems are the same format. What we've got here is the terminal side of theta in standard position contains the point negative 8, 15. Find the exact values of the six trigonometric functions of theta. So you're going to go to your reference sheet, and on your reference sheet is going to be the following information, that the cosine of any angle is equal to x over r, that the sine of any angle is y over r, that the tangent of any angle is y over x, that the secant of any angle is r over x, that the cosecant of any angle is r over y, and the cotangent of any angle is x over y. We have seen this quite a bit this year, so this should not be new information. Now you'll notice that all six of these trig functions are made up of a total of three variables, x, y, and r. Now in the problem, they gave us a point, negative 8, 15. Negative 8, 15 tells us that x equals negative 8 and y equals 15. Now that's important because also on the reference sheet you're going to see the following equation which applies to any angle in standard position. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So what we do is we plug in x squared and y squared into that equation to find r squared because x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Negative 8 squared is 64, 15 squared is 225. We add those together, that is 289 for r squared. And then the final step in the process of finding r is to take the square root of 289. Now normally this would imply that r would be plus or minus 289. However, you may recall me saying back in chapter 1 and 2 when we learned this information that r is the distance from the origin which means r is always positive because distance cannot be negative. So r would be 17. From there, all we need to do is take x, which is negative 8, y, which is 15, and r, which is 17, and plug them in to get our six fractions. So sine of theta is y over r. That would be 15 over 17. Now you should put this in the calculator to make sure it doesn't reduce, but I should hope that we all realize that 15 over 17 doesn't reduce. For cosine, x over r would be negative 8 over 17. For tangent, that's y over x. So y over x would be 15 over negative 8. Cosecant is r over y, that is 17 over 15. Secant is r over x, that is 17 over negative 8, and cotangent is x over y, which would be negative 8 over 15. Done. I'm going to take a quick picture of this so that I don't have to keep rewriting it every time. Again, this will be on your reference sheet. So let's do another one. There's three total on the packet. Hopefully you've done all three and you're only using this video to check your answers. If not, you should pause this video now and try it on your own. So again, this is on the reference sheet. What we're going to do is we're going to take this point, negative 5, 12. That tells us that x is negative 5 and y is 12. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So negative 5 squared plus 12 squared equals r squared. And we're going to solve for r. 25 plus 144 is r squared. That would be 169 equals r squared. And then we take the square root. The square root of 169 would imply that r is 13. And again, we don't need to worry about the plus or minus that's there algebraically because r is always positive. Sine of theta is y over r. That would be 12 over 13, which does not reduce. Cosine of theta is x over r, that is negative 5 over 13, which does not reduce. Tangent of theta is y over x, that is 12 over negative 5, 
which does not reduce. We don't ever want to write it as a decimal. We do not ever want to write it as a mixed number. We want a reduced improper fraction. Cosecant is r over y. That's 13 over 12, which does not reduce. Secant is r over x. That's 13 over negative 5, which does not reduce. And cotangent is x over y. That is negative 5 over 12. Again, you should be trying these problems on your own before coming to this video to get the solution. Just watching me do the problems is not enough work for you to prepare for your final. So if you've not already tried one on your own, pause this video and try the third one on your own. All right, on to the third problem. Same exact deal. Okay, So we have on our reference sheet this information. Now, this one is going to be a little bit different because we're not going to get a, well, yeah, we will, never mind. So we have the point 3, negative 4. That tells us that x is 3 and y is negative 4. So we're going to do x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That would be 3 squared plus negative 4 squared equals r squared. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. 9 plus 16 is 25. Take the square root. And we get r equals 5. That means the sine, which is y over r, would be negative 4 fifths. The cosine, which is x over r, would be 3 fifths. The tangent, which is y over x, would be negative 4 thirds. The cosecant, which is r over y, would be 5 over negative 4. The secant, which is r over x, would be 5 over 3. And the cotangent, which is x over y, would be 3 over negative 4. That completes the first page of the packet.